Okay, today I'm going to show you how to use Google Forms and your Google Drive in order to create um, assignments, assign them to your students and have your students submit them. It can be used at homework if you have a lot of computers in your classroom. You can use them for in-class assignments or you can go to the computer lab and, 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 and complete these assignments there. But you know, with Common Core, Digital fluency is, is a big piece of that, and with testing with Park and Smarter Balance, kids are going to have to do more tasks on the computer. So this is a way to get the kids using the computer to complete assignments um, throughout the year. Okay, so one of the things you're going to have to do is you're going to have to sign in to a, a Gmail account or a Google account. Okay, so I'm just going to put in... This is... Um, I don't even need to put Gmail. But this is one I made, otherwise you might have to create an account. And I'm going to sign in. Give me any Google account, okay? So now I'm here, this is, so as I'm signed in. Now, on most Google accounts you sign into, you're going to see these nine little boxes. And these are your apps, okay? This is where you're going to find your Google Drive. Now, if your district has, um, you linked up to Google Apps accounts or Google accounts to your regular email. You can sign in with that, but you're going to have to find um, which link to sign in. You're not just going to sign in through here. You can, and it'll redirect you somewhere else. I know if my district, I just I go through the district website, and it will it will set me up. Okay, but once you get logged in, click on your apps. Okay, and these are your basic apps. There's a lot more of them too. Okay, Blogger, Wallet, I and mean, you can add and search for more apps too. Okay, but I'm going to click on Drive. Because your Google Drive, it's like a server or a cloud of sorts. Now, I don't want to download the drive to my computer right now. You can, and it's a neat thing to do. I have one on my work computer and my home computer, but right now I'm going to say no thanks. Because you don't have to. Okay, and this is my drive. My drive is empty right now because I don't have I don't have anything that I've made. Now what you're going to do is you're going to do create. Boom. And you can create a folder, a document, presentation, spreadsheet, or form. A document is similar to a Word document. Presentation is similar to PowerPoint. Spreadsheet is basically Google's answer to Excel. And there's this Google form. What I really like about this Google Form is Microsoft doesn't quite have um, anything similar with it that you can that has the, the functionality that this Google Form does. Okay, and this is where we're going to create our assignment. So I'm going to create my Google Form. Okay, now on yours, if you sign in, I'm just going to get. I'm going to click out. I don't need this right now. Okay. I'm going to make it, and so I'm going to call it sample. And then you get to choose all these themes down here. Okay. I'm going to use the books. Since books classic, it's highlighted. I'm going to click OK. Now, if you are using your district account, it might come up here saying you need to sign in with whatever school district account you have in order to be able to complete this form. Okay, I would unclick that. Unless your students already have Google accounts through the school district and they know how to log in, that's fine. But I'm going to do it so you don't have to have that. Okay, so the one I'm showing is free to anybody who has the link. They can go ahead and fill out the form. Now, does that mean somebody from outside your class can come in and fill it out? Well, yeah, but they have to know where to look. Okay, it's not just going to be posted um, where anybody can see. And I'm going to show you how you can share it so your students can go ahead and do that. And the first thing I, the first question I always have is name. Okay. And the next important thing you need to do is your question type. Now I'm not going to have a multiple choice question with name. So I'm going to open up, I'm going to use text. And as you can see, it gives you a little box right here about this size to type in your answer, in this case the name. And I always say required question. Because that way your students cannot submit the form without writing their name in there. And I'm going to hit done.
That's my first question. I'm going to add another item. And let's say that they read a story and I'm going to have them answer what is the main idea. So what is the main idea of this story? I don't just want them to write the main idea. I want them to give me a piece of evidence. Okay, prove it. So give one piece of evidence to support your answer. So that's in the help text. Kind of gives them another direction. It will show up underneath of the question. And I'm even going to say write at least two sentences. Okay, those are my, my question and my directions. Now I don't want them to type it in one of these small little boxes right here. So I'm going to make this a paragraph text. Okay, paragraph text. Required question. I'm a plus done. Now see these little asterisks after each question? That shows it's required. Okay, so they have to fill out answers for both of these without before they turn in the form, otherwise it won't let them. So I'm going to add another item, another question. Now this doesn't have to just be used for homework. This could be filling out like a, an information form for your parents or students as well, but I'm using it for questions right now. Now You'll find in, in new Common Core tests that there are multiple choice or selected response questions, but usually they have more than one answer you can pick. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do that with this. So I'm going to say, what are um, some of the main characters' traits? And since I'm going to put, uh, give them a lot of possible answers and they're going to pick all of them that apply, I'm going to say select all that apply right there in my help text text because it gives me another direction. Now I'm not going to use this text box here. I'm not just going to use a multiple choice because the multiple choice you can only have one possible answer. I'm going to use this check boxes. A check boxes, they can click as many or as few as they want, as or many as few as they see fit. So I'm going to say silly. And I can either click down here with my mouse or just hit enter and it brings to me to the next one. Serious. I'm going to say intelligent. Oops. Diligent lazy, dull. Okay. And when I'm done, I'm going to click on required question and done. Now they can pick as many or as few as they want there. Now let's say you want to um, assign a question like old school that only has one correct answer. Let's say I, we can do that. So who was the antagonist? Instead of this text box or paragraph text, I'm going to choose multiple choice. Okay. And I'll say um, that it was Joe, Sally, enter Ralph. or Lucy. Okay. I'm going to add as many as I want. And let's say, you know, I really don't want Ralph on there at all. I can hit that little, that little X next to it and it got rid of it. I hit require a question and I say done. So right now I have three choices right here. Okay. Now at the bottom when I'm done, it says the confirmation page. What do you want it to tell them when they're done? So I'm going to say, great job. And when it says, show link to submit another response, it'll do a little another, it'll, it'll show up with a link there. And that way, um, a student can click on it and do the assignment again. Now, if you have maybe only a group of computers and kids are going to, and multiple kids are going to use it, like once one finishes, um, the next, another student's going to come. 
I would do that because then the next child can just come, click that link, and then do their response. Okay. Now when you're done, you're gonna you're gonna send the form. There's a place for it right here, and there's a place for it right here. Okay. And before we do that, I want you to see up here. It says all changes saved in Drive. So as you do it, it will update this form. So I could just close out of it right now, come back to my Drive. Look, I'm gonna do that. I didn't press save. I'm going to go to my Google Drive and look, there's a sample one right there. And I click on it. It's going to open up, still loading, all of the questions I've already done. Now I'm going to send form. Now I can share it with Google Plus. I can share it with Facebook or Twitter. You can also email it to people. Or I like to take this link and I just hit Control see now I can cop like copy this on to a whiteboard and have the kids type it in I like to put the link on a website okay and you might not have a class website I have another video that shows you using the same Google account you can make a really quick website and it's not hard and the kids can go there and click on it okay so I'm gonna show you over here this is what my form is going to look like. I copied that link, I put it in a new brand, and look, right here. It has the books and everything. So I'm just going to show you what happens when you go through. So I'm going to type in my name. My name is Blair. What is the main of the day of the story? You should always be nice. The story states... When I was nice, I got an ice cream cone. Okay. And what are the characters' traits that will be? They are serious, intelligent, and diligent. And who's the antagonist? It was Sally. Okay, I'm just going through here. I'm hitting submit. And see, there's my link to submit another response. Okay. Now, where does it go? What's going on here? Well, if you go back to your Google Drive, I'm going to hit Refresh. Oh, I need to choose my response destination. And I'm going to create a new spreadsheet. See where it says Always Create New Spreadsheet? Boom. And it tells me I have one response. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my Google Drive, and my sample response is right there. Now afterwards, every time I do this, it's already going to make one for me. I'm going to click on Sample Responses, and it's loading it, still loading it, and mine's going to show up right here. Okay. Now, see how there's some, there's... I can move play with these cells in order to get my answers but everything that showed up is right there okay. I'm gonna bring this down make it bigger wait let's see Bam. okay uh -oh. now usually it kinda of puts these together but you can read what they wrote Okay. Now I've done it with um, paragraphs before, and it usually it links it in. I don't know why this is doing this right now, but see, it gives me all the answers right here, so I can go through and correct it pretty easily. Okay. Now let's say I have more than one class using this assignment. I can just hit share, and I can say I can put people's names in there. I can change it from private. I can put people's names in there, then they can get on and see how their kids did as well. Okay, so again, neat way to use your um, the Google Drive to assign and submit assignments, and then they're all going to show up right here. Okay, all right.